friends in our today's video oh my god <laughs> i'm very very excited guys because i'm gonna be taking you back in those days when i was still dating my italian boyfriend who is my husband now <laughs> yeah and this video is from the video that i did three years ago on how we met guys i've been getting lots of questions from that video and today i decided to answer you <laughs> among of the questions that i have been getting is bella you did not share here in this video if you gave your goodies bella did you share your goodies when you first met him <laughs> So I'll be answering that, but there is a lot more guys, more Afro cinema that I did share in the first part on how we met. So uh, this video, if you're someone who is out there searching for the one, it is going to help you very, very much me sharing my experience my dating experience <laughs> i know there are some things that sometimes you do them you don't know if you're making mistakes when it comes to that part that i told you some of you chase men away <laughs> due to the way you react to things so it is also another thing that we are going to be learning from today's story so what i want you to do right now is sit down relax relax with a glass of water, a glass of juice, wine, some popcorns, anything that will keep you company while enjoying this story. So while enjoying this story, you are calm, something else. <laughs> Imagine that you are talking to your best friend, that best friend that you can share anything about you, <laughs> you know, Oh, you are listening to your sister, a sister that you love very much, a sister that is so open to you, you know, because <laughs> that's how I take you guys. And that's why I'm telling you to think that way. Disclaimer, guys, before I jump into this video, I've talked about me telling you if I shared the goodies when we first met or not. <laughs> Last time I received a comment, someone was complaining why do I sit here and entertain, you know, talking about goodies, you know, entertain ladies that give themselves to men, you know, <laughs> share the goodies with men, whereby I am a Christian lady. I said I am a believer. I'm a child of God. Why should I entertain that in my channel? So one thing I have to let you know is that, yes, I am a believer. Yes, I'm a child of God. Yes, I pray. But you should also understand what my channel is all about. It's all about the real talk. So a lady can tell me, yes, I shared my goodies when we first met, but because I want my channel to look like a holy place, <laughs> perfect place <laughs> i tell you no she never shared the goodies she waited till marriage <laughs> you know tell you lies and again say this is the real talk no guys my channel is about the real talk if someone shared her goodies before marriage i'm gonna tell you as it is yes she shared her goodies because the reality is not all women wait till marriage to share their goodies if someone is okay to share her goodies let her be you know that's what she has chosen to do you know and if someone chooses not to share her goodies till marriage, let us let her be, okay? Because there are some stories I shared here. I told you they waited till marriage. So let's understand this, guys. This is the real talk. And today's love story or today's story will be about the real talk. I've got nothing to hide. I've got nothing to be ashamed of. I don't regret anything, you know, in this story. And I'm going to be very open to you because I love you guys and because I think from my story, it's gonna help someone out there. I repeat, <laughs> you are allowed to disagree. You are allowed to write anything because we can't think the same. But always remember to be respectful in your comments. Because last time I shared a video of KK and Graham, 
guys i received some comments on that video which were very very hateful which were very very disrespectful i don't know guys why should you do that at least write what you don't agree about but don't go ahead and start insulting people guys i had to delete them but other comments were removed by youtube themselves because they want you guys to be respectful <laughs> we can't come here and start insulting each other so that's why i gave you a disclaimer before i start my story please please be respectful thank you so dear friends i am going to be starting my story with a little bit <laughs> of my life background and the reason is there are some things i'm going to be sharing with you in this story if i don't tell you my life background a bit of it you will not understand because <laughs> i remember doing a video in the past of my first experience here in italy you know the culture shocks and i talked of seeing my boyfriend my husband now preparing vegetables you know the salads <laughs> without cooking them what was added in was olive oil olives tomatoes salt and he was like ready my love come on we eat I was like what but it's not cooked because <laughs> i was a village girl i'm still a village girl a village always be a village <laughs> And where I grew up, I never saw people eating vegetables without cooking them. But came one Tanzanian lady was like, no, but here in Tanzania, we also eat salads. <laughs> what she forgot, I said where I grew up. From the family where I grew up. Not those richer families whereby kids experience everything, you know. <laughs> If you ask them what's pizza, they know what's pizza. <laughs> Salads, they know everything. Even food that is not Tanzanian food, they have tested it due to the kind of lifestyle. But my own lifestyle, I never tasted uncooked vegetables. It was the first time me trying out salad. <laughs> okay, now to a bit of my life background, guys. So I come from a very humble background we were born seven and i am the last born <laughs> there is a story i shared here too i told you how my brothers were very very protective of me because i am the last born i lost my mom when i was nine years old may her soul keep resting in peace amen love you mama <laughs> oh my god i don't want to get emotional and sorry <laughs> Hi. <sighs> sorry guys okay sorry guys i got so emotional <sighs> if you have lost a parent you will understand me so when i was 14 i lost my dad too <sighs> so guys when i was 14 again i lost my dad may his soul keep resting in peace amen i love you dad so dear friends after the loss of my both parents it's my aunt the aunt that also left us this january i think you guys can still remember i posted on my community post and also on instagram yeah so she grew me up i really miss her so so much <coughs> may her soul keep resting in peace yeah but it's life guys what can we do it's life i tend to sometimes not to think of them and keep moving forward because i know it's what they would want me to keep moving forward let's wipe all the tears and keep on moving with the story because there is a lot lots more things that we really need to hear from this story if i keep on breaking down like this i think i won't share this story to the end okay so 
another break. <laughs> yeah. So my aunt grew me up, but it's not that we're living that luxurious life or a very rich, rich life. No, the life was very, very normal. You know, it wasn't easy, guys, because it's not that she was only taking care of me. She had her own kids and also my brothers that were also still studying. Yeah, so it wasn't easy. And that's why sometimes when I talk to you, I tell you that I understand you. I know how life can be very, very difficult. <laughs> One thing that is very, very funny when I think of it now, I remember taking ugali for breakfast and go to school. <laughs> Nigerians, you call it fufu. I think something like that. Yeah. Like you cook fufu for dinner and then the next morning <laughs> you take it for breakfast with tea. Whereby some other kids, you know, our neighbors, <laughs> I could see, you know, when I go like, you know, when I could pass to their houses so that you can go together to school, I could find them like eating bread and tea, you know. <laughs> <laughs> whereby i just finished eating fufu with tea but that's life guys <laughs> you cannot that's why i've been telling you keep moving forward one thing you need to thank god is that you are alive you're still breathing you've got energy you know to change your life the way it is right now okay <laughs> Yeah, so life was like that, but my aunt really tried a lot and took me to school. With the help of my brothers that were older than me, I finished high school. And when I finished high school, I remember I started working. So I remember I could work and also paid for my university fee. I became very, very independent at a very younger age which has made me to be a strong woman as i am today so guys to my past love relationship experience <laughs> i remember telling you about this i did a video i told you everything but i'm gonna be talking about it again a little bit maybe for some of you that did not see that video i did not have any good past relationship experience it was bad 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 those guys broke my heart things were here guys i had given up on love completely you know before getting to know my husband i believed and i believe still now that i am a very good woman a wife material someone very very understanding and i tried my best when I tell you I tried my best, I really tried my best. And the guys that I dated to show them that I am a good woman, you know, I'm a woman to marry, I am loving, I am caring, <laughs> I am positive, I'm a strong woman, but they did not see that. They paid me back by cheating on me, they paid me back by lying to me, they paid me back by taking my goodies and then disappear. That's what I got in return. And when I tell you my heart was in two pieces before getting to know my husband, yes, it was guys. And friends, cause I've told you, some guys could take my goodies then disappear. Now you wonder, Bella, <laughs> when did you start sharing your goodies? <laughs> guys, the truth is I was a very good girl. Even when I was a teenager, never ever shared my goodies yes i had a boyfriend in all level we never enjoyed the goodies never guys it was just boyfriend and girlfriend that's it <laughs> nothing else and even when i went to a level i never you know dated anyone i never came close to a guy you know being like you know in a love relationship i remember some guys could even joke about it tell me oh i think you guys in tanzania have got arranged marriages <laughs> you have your own boyfriend there you know waiting for you that's why you don't want to date anyone for me i was in school for studying it was a boarding school <laughs> yeah it was studying 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 love 
no so i was really a good girl i've got my ogs here <laughs> you can comment below if you ever saw me with a guy <laughs> at school never <laughs> it never happened guys so when i finished high school i started working i remember at the age of 22 <laughs> that's when i first shared my goodies <laughs> But the experience, guys, mm -mm, it wasn't a good one at all. I was like, if this is the way it is, I'm not going to share again my goodies. And from there, guys, yes, I could date some guys. And, you know, sometimes, yes, <laughs> share the goodies. But I wasn't that kind of a lady whereby all the time, you know, a guy checks you and you share the goodies. You know, there are some guys that you can date, but they're dating you just because they only want to take your goodies. So you find a guy taking the goodies <laughs> even four times a week and you are girlfriend and boyfriend. So to me, that never happened. You know, it could happen, yes, but maybe in a month, I can say once or twice, that's it. And the reason is, I could be like, I can't just be giving you my goodies all the time, whereby we are not married. If I keep on being so easy on you like that, when are you going to be like, oh, I need to get married to this lady? <laughs> So that we can enjoy the goodies well. <laughs> so I was that kind of a girl. So my goodies lover, I want you to comment down below. When was your first time sharing your goodies? At what age you were? And what was your first, you know, <laughs> experience? How was it like? How did you feel? Were you like me be like, no, I'm not going to repeat again. <laughs> if this is how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny but it's a girl's talk you know let's just enjoy life guys there is no need to be hard on ourselves and start being like why did you share your goodies <laughs> some of you are so disappointed in me now right <laughs> but this is the real talk okay so let's continue so friends to my online dating journey but before we go to my online dating journey there is this question that I always ask couples or ladies that share their love story with us, which is, have you ever thought of getting married to a white man before meeting your boyfriend? I'm asking myself this question because the story is about me today. <laughs> My honest answer is no. I never thought of getting married to a white man. It never even crossed my mind. But due to the bad relationship experience in the past with Tanzanian men, I was like, no, I think Kenyan men makes good husbands. <laughs> I know Kenyan ladies, you are laughing a lot right now, knowing how Kenyan men are. But for me, I thought any man who is not from Tanzania is better <laughs> than my brother's Tanzanian men. So guys, to my online dating journey. So when I was in that state of giving up <laughs> with Tanzanian men and my mind was like, no, I think Kenyan men will be good or maybe men from Congo, South Africa, not Tanzanian men. But where would I get a guy who is not Tanzanian? I am a Tanzanian. I live in Tanzania. What came into my mind was joining online dating apps. One time I was on Facebook, you know, scrolling. Then I came across dating apps, the adverts. That's when I decided, you know, to join online dating apps and start searching. But I wasn't searching for a white man. For me, I was focusing on finding true love because that is what I was missing, guys. So my online dating experience... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't good at all because when I joined online dating apps, I didn't have any experience that I've got right now, you know. <laughs> you guys know I'm a pro, but at that time, I had no clue, you know, of how online dating world can be. And guys played me. <laughs> I told you one time, 
I exchanged Skype names. A guy who pretended to be 50. So when I opened the camera, the guy was 60. He looked like he is in his 60s and was holding his eggplant, you know. Then he asked me, is it big enough for you? <laughs> Do you like it? Oh my goodness, I lost the camera immediately. I was like, what this? My heart was, you know, <laughs> going so fast. Because <laughs> that was the first time, you know, seeing something like that, you know, like seeing a white guy naked. <laughs> <laughs> Another bad experience that I remember, I told you guys, I chatted with a guy. <laughs> this guy was Ugandan. I told you guys, for me, I thought men who are not Tanzanians were good, you know. So I was chatting with all men, you know, whether you're white, you're black. We could go. I only wanted love. <laughs> so I chatted with this Ugandan guy. He was cute, young. <laughs> <laughs> yes, tall. Oh my god, the guy was really juicy. <laughs> yeah, so we chatted and he was so loving. He had family in Rwanda. I don't know if it's true. He was from Kampala. So we started like planning on how to meet, you know, and he told me I'll be going to Rwanda to visit my brother. So I want that same day when I arrive, you arrive too. I'm going to be booking a flight ticket for you to Kigali. Oh my God, I was over the moon, excited, you know, talking to my friends in Tanzania and even the other friend who was in Italy that I told you. So I was telling them how I'm excited, how this guy is cute you know showing them the photos <laughs> so when the time to meet was approaching the guy disappeared on me he was online but wasn't responding to my calls wasn't responding to my messages this guy was ugandan studying and working in sweden so when he disappeared on me started ignoring me oh my god i kept on pushing <laughs> oh i was so stupid guys you know to do that thinking of it now but i kept on pushing i cried a lot why did i cry you know for a guy that i just met online <laughs> <laughs> a guy that we haven't even met you know physically but it's because i didn't have experience that is why i'm telling you guys do not cry for a guy online <laughs> you need to make sure the guy is the one you know maybe he has come you met engaged you met your parents you know maybe did big big things to you and then when he disappears there, yes, you can cry because you have attached yourself already emotionally to him. But a guy that you're just, you know, chatting online, hmm. First of all, attaching yourself emotionally to him, that is very, very wrong. Never do that. <laughs> and never cry for a guy that you have met online, really, because he doesn't deserve that. He's there, you know, happy with his life, moving on with his life, and you're there crying. <laughs> so I really cried a lot and he was like no you know right now I've got so many problems at work I need to concentrate on that you know for for the good of us because you know I'm going to get married to you <laughs> so just give me some time I asked him how long should I wait for you but he responded to my messages after me threatening him to take my life <laughs> Yes, now I can tell you this because if you find yourself in a situation like that, mm, don't waste your time. That's when he started responding to me and he was like, give me time. So I asked him, how long should I wait for you? He was like, oh, I don't know. But my intuition told me that that guy just wanted to end the relationship, you know. He answered me, yes, he wants me to give him time, but for him, it was over. He had finished playing his games on me, you know. Yeah, so later on, I had to sit and think of it very well, and I came back to him, I was like, look, you think that you don't want to keep on the relationship with me, it's okay. Just be open with me. It's gonna hurt me, but just be honest. Tell me the truth. We can even remain friends. <laughs> 
but me telling him that doesn't mean that i was expecting you know for him to be like yes yes i wanted to end the relationship <laughs> i was telling him that to see what he's gonna respond you no know, if i should keep on holding to that relationship keep on waiting for him till the break is over <laughs> So this guy fell into my trap. He was like, yeah, you know, we can be good friends. Who knows in the future what will happen? And from there, I was like, oh, yes, I got you. I gave him a block, but it really, really hurt me so, so much. Get to learn from this. Do not attach yourself to a guy emotionally that you meet on online dating apps before you see the actions. So guys, I really went through a lot on online dating apps and then came this good, handsome German guy. <laughs> we chatted and he was, you know, very, very honest, seemed very genuine. We could do video calls, show me around the house, but this guy was relocating to Kenya for work. He had his company in Kenya. So he told me I will be going to Kenya and when I go to Kenya, I want you to choose where should we meet you know our first meeting where should it be should it be in Dar es Salaam or it should be in Kenya Nairobi I want us to meet in a place that you are comfortable you know to meet me and that really made me know that this guy is serious this guy is very very genuine <laughs> So guys, as everything was going super good, that's when my friend communicated to me, told me about an Italian guy, sent me his photo. <laughs> and from there, I changed my mind, guys. I was like, no. So I never wanted to keep on wasting that German guy's time. I decided to block him. Why I blocked him without any notice, I never wanted to hear him like complaining, you know. You never know how someone would react. All the things that he could have told me, you know, to change my mind. <laughs> so I was like, no, 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 no. And then started communicating with my boyfriend, my Italian boyfriend, <laughs> my husband. I think this I explained to you in the first video on how we met. To know how it all went, you can go back and watch part one on how we met. So guys, we kept on communicating and our communication wasn't like, you know, people who are in love. No, it was like a getting to know each other. He said that he really likes my country. I could also ask him about his life. How was his day, you know, at work that day? Some sort of communication, guys. Now we go to the Afro cinema <laughs> that I never mentioned in the first video. <laughs> So guys, I can remember this very, very well. It was day four <laughs> from the day my friend gave him my WhatsApp number. So that day he wrote me a message, it was during the evening after work, cause he used to write me in the morning, afternoon, and in the evening. So his evening message was like this. Hello Maria, how did you spend your day today? I was like, what? Who is Maria? <laughs> Guys, imagine <laughs> in Swahili, <laughs> there is a say they say, umeuziwa mbuzi kwenye gunia. <laughs> so I was like, oh my god, this friend, ameniuziwa mbuzi kwenye gunia. <laughs> I'll try to see the translation in English and write it down there <laughs> so that you English speakers can understand. <laughs> So I asked him, who is Maria? Not Maria. <laughs> he told me, oh my God, I'm so sorry. When your friend gave me your phone number, I saved as Maria. <laughs> so I've been communicating to you as Maria. So guys, you who is watching this video now, write me in the comment section. If you were the one, if you were Bella, what could you have done to this guy? Could you have left him? Could you have blocked him? Or you could have, you know, listened to him and believe what he is telling you. <laughs> so he was so sorry and told me it's not that I have someone called Maria, not at all. I don't know anyone by the name of Maria. I saved you as Maria. I don't know how it happened, but I've been chatting with you knowing your name is Maria. 
So what came into my mind, I told him, just hold on. I had to communicate to my friend. I was like, look, do you know anyone by the name of Maria to this guy? My friend was like, no, 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 no. I don't know anyone by that name. <laughs> what I know, the guy is single. I was like, okay. So I got back to him and I told him, it's okay. Do not worry. Let's forget about it. And the reason why I did that First, my friend assured me she doesn't know anyone by Maria. But second, guys, the fact that I was told the guy is single and searching, wanted someone so badly, he is now talking to me. That means the guy is really single. I'm not going to judge him now. I just want to see how things go. It's not that guys were already boyfriend and girlfriend. I'm telling you, it was only day four. So I had to act the mature way if that maria existed of course me going so deep into things i could have found out that there is maria than me overreacting blocking the guy and then later on come to know no maria existed yes he made a mistake and it's true he was a genuine guy who wanted to get married i could have lost him so this goes to all of you that are out there searching for love you are chatting to someone don't rush into a conclusion no guys get deep into things and get to find out the truth i'm not encouraging you guys to allow men on online dating apps or even in real life you are chatting put you in love triangles not at all but once there is something you are not sure of go deep into it to find out the truth to confirm once you confirm of course you leave that guy if it's true you know he lied to you also this teaches us not to overreact over things my husband tells me that that day yes he was super super scared in italian when someone is scared they do you know <laughs> he was yeah <laughs> thought he was going to lose me he told me if it was another woman you know those women who overreact would have blocked him that same same day of being called a name of another a woman but me being like it's okay no problem let's forget about it i understand you he was like i knew you were the one from that day because for me i was looking for a calm intelligent understanding woman and that day when you said it's okay i knew you were intelligent understanding and very calm because it is peace that i wanted i never wanted someone very aggressive i never wanted someone who you know overreacts about things due to his past love relationship experience so when i tell you if you write i am very understanding i am very calm you know i'm very positive about life i'm very strong in your bios on online dating <laughs> <laughs> when you start chatting with these guys if something happens you should act the same way as your bio <laughs> what you have written don't just put the words there just to be there <laughs> you have to show actions too you know that yes i am this just like i described myself <laughs> So guys, that was the first Afro cinema, but we have another Afro cinema coming. <laughs> yeah. So guys, everything was going very, very well between us. And remember, my boyfriend or my husband now told me he liked Tanzania. So he had planned already to go to Tanzania, even before my friend talked to him. So he told me, I am planning to come to Tanzania. But his first intention wasn't that he's coming for me this is the truth guys he was coming in tanzania for tourism but after getting to know me he was like okay i will also take that chance you know to meet you so guys he finally came like i explained in the first part in details guys if you want to know go and watch the first part but what missed in the first part is if i shared the goodies when he first came in tanzania yes he came we talked till late at night we seated very close you know <laughs> at that restaurant in the hotel touched each other's hands 
kissed, but it was just a stamp kiss. <laughs> like you're kissing your friend. <laughs> yeah, because it's not that, you know, our relationship was that intense. Not yet, guys. Like we're still, you know, scared of each other. <laughs> it's the first time, you know, meeting him. It's the first time, you know, me being in contact closely, you know, with a white guy. So everything was new. I was happy, but at the same time, you know, scared, you know, <laughs> very curious of how, you know, they do things. <laughs> yeah, village girl. <laughs> Yeah, so we talked till late night and if you want to know about the goodies, no guys, I did not share my goodies that night because first of all, like I said, it's like we're not scared of each other <laughs> and he was very, very respectful but thirdly, we slept different hotels. So he left the next day, yes, he came, we took breakfast together, I took a walk in the park, all was really really good you know holding hands and when it came time to say goodbye because we only stayed together for that day because he was continuing with his tourist activities in tanzania i couldn't be like you know i want to come along so we really hugged so tightly and we were sad you know to leave each other but to be honest with you deep inside my mind you know i never took it like so seriously i was like he met me. I don't know if he likes me. Yes, he hugged me so tightly. I could feel him, you know, when someone hugs you, you know, like so passionately, <laughs> you feel it. But again, he's from Italy. I am a Tanzanian. So I was there thinking, how is it going to happen? How is it going to work? You know, <laughs> I never wanted to daydream, you know. <laughs> of things that were going to hurt me so yes i was very sad but at the same time i was like okay <laughs> and i still had my power because i never gave out my goodies for that first time so even if we remained friends it was just going to be totally okay and the way it turned out i really thank god guys so i told you love always finds you when you least expect it when you are not desperate when you have decided to leave everything into the hands of god so after him leaving tanzania returning to italy yes we kept on communicating and things were getting you know a little intense then one day he told me do you have a passport i told him yes i've got a passport then he was like have you ever traveled you know outside tanzania i was like no i have never traveled and the truth is guys in the past i had only traveled once you know on air <laughs> I remember it's my friend who paid for my ticket from Dar es Salaam to Kilimanjaro. It was a one-way ticket. When we returned, we returned by the bus. So it's like I didn't have any experience, you know, <laughs> being in the flight. <laughs> <laughs> your village girl so he told me i would like to invite you to italy so that you can come get to see my life i was like what oh my god i couldn't believe it i asked him twice are you serious <laughs> he told me yes i am very very serious but i want you to answer me this you know before we go forward <laughs> are you ready to relocate you know <laughs> from your country to Italy. I was like, yes, yes. If everything goes well, why not? Yes, I can relocate. Then he said, I want to invite you. And I asked him, when are you planning to invite me? <laughs> I remember it was October. He told me he wants to invite me December. So his plan was to invite me December 2016, you know, to Italy so that we can spend Christmas time together. So after me agreeing we immediately started preparing for the documents needed for a tourist visa to Italy. So as I was preparing the documents, guys, I was so excited. I could, you know, <laughs> daydream. At that time, yes, I used to daydream, you know, imagine of how life is, you know, in Europe. You know, you start thinking because you never experience, you don't know how it's like. <laughs> 
so what i could do i could only imagine and at that time guys i doubled my prayers i could pray and pray and pray i could also go to church on friday sleep there it is only praying and praying but i was really in a good mood all the time <laughs> you know me bella traveling <laughs> to Italy oh my god I can't even express the feeling guys very well of how I was feeling at that time so I know right now you're asking yourself Bella you never told us when did you introduce him to your family <laughs> <laughs> so with this i don't know if i'm a good example or not but in some cases guys i think <laughs> i can be a good example so let me tell you how the introduction was so when did i introduce him to my family <laughs> <laughs> guys we kept on like communicating the relationship went so well then we talked about the visa i started preparing for the documents and at that time when i was preparing for the documents you know i'm traveling outside tanzania you know to go meet this guy so yes i talked to one of my elder sister that i consider as a mother yeah i told her everything but my brothers never shared anything at all i told my sister if i hear this from anyone else talking about it i will be so angry at you and i'll never share anything <laughs> about my life <laughs> i even threatened her you know <laughs> to stop talking to her if i hear that she talked to my brothers the reason why i never wanted my brothers to find out is because they were very very protective and i felt like they were going to get on my way you know and start stopping everything so i was really scared you know to tell my brothers about it i was like no <laughs> i have to make sure this works out and if it really works out then of course i'll have to tell them they will have no choice than accepting it so after talking to her she understood me and was like it's okay but i'm gonna be keeping on communicating to you while you are there to make sure you are safe i told her don't worry i'm gonna be safe so we continued with the visa preparations and we have got another afro cinema <laughs> so guys at the time i was preparing all documents for the visa i never had any experience of how the visa interview can be what are the questions they can ask you you know for me i knew you just apply for the visa and get your visa so i prepared everything and then my boyfriend booked for my appointment you know at the embassy the day came i went so after arriving at the embassy i had not filled in the form you know for the visa application so i remember there is a secretary there who helped me like fill in everything told me put this put this you know so fast and everything was done then i waited for my turn they called my name then i went to submit the documents so after submitting my documents i paid for the visa fee and that visa fee it's my boyfriend who sent me that money because he is a responsible guy <laughs> and he told me he's gonna sponsor the whole trip i'm not supposed to put any money into that trip so when i paid for the visa fee the lady gave me a receipt with a date when to return back to the embassy to take my visa and then travel <laughs> <laughs> so the day to return back came but i can tell you i never even imagined they were going to interview me so when i arrived <laughs> at the embassy my turn came she called me and started asking me questions questions after questions she was shooting questions to me to an extent i didn't know why why is this lady you know asking me all of this then she pulled a paper which was a copy of the passport of a lady <laughs> so she asked me do you know this lady i was like no then she looked at me so angry <laughs> guys recently we were discussing about it and my husband was like i swear i don't know how i forgot but i was supposed to sue that woman <laughs> 
could she go and pull my private information and put them to light like that? You don't do that. <laughs> That's against the law. So I told him, but you, you are very lucky because if it was another woman, could have left you already. <laughs> You did lots of mistakes, you know. <laughs> he was like, I thank God you are not another woman. <laughs> you are a very good woman and very understanding. So about the lady, guys, I've been telling you when you are chatting with a guy, you know, you know the things that I always tell you are the things that I experienced. So when I tell you that I'm talking to you as a sister, you just need to believe me, guys. Yes, I remember telling you this, not even one time, that when you're chatting with a guy, ask him if he has ever dated a black woman, if he knows anything about, you know, black women, anything about Africa, so that you get to know his experience. You need to know. It's very, very important. So to my Afro cinema, guys, <laughs> do not insult my husband, though. <laughs> <laughs> I know some of you will come here and be like, ah, why? Why did he lie? <laughs> so he did not lie to me, actually. When I asked him that question, he answered me very honestly. Yes, I've dated a black woman before, and that's why when your friend talked to me about you, I accepted because <laughs> I've got experience, you know, dating a black woman. And actually... That black woman that I dated is from Tanzania, like you. But it wasn't a good experience. It ended badly. I don't even want to think about it. And that was when he came to visit. When we were talking, you know, till late night, we also talked about that. But because he wanted to enjoy time, you know, talk more of positive things, he told me, if we meet the next time, I'm gonna talk to you in details of what happened in that relationship. But yes, I was in a love relationship before with a Tanzanian lady. So at the embassy, after me being asked about that lady and I answered no, because I didn't know even her name, <laughs> Because my boyfriend never mentioned even what was her name, you know. Never went into details and he didn't know that they were going to ask me that. Because he told me if he knew they were going to ask me that, then of course he could have told me everything. So that when I'm asked, I answer them correctly. So after that, the lady started, you know, going deep into things, you know, into my documents, started telling me, started telling me I don't have enough income on my bank statement, which was true because the salary that I was earning, guys, was $150 per month. That was my salary. So she took that as an excuse, then added the lady's situation, which wasn't even my fault, and told me your visa is denied, madam. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i felt like sitting down there on the floor i was so frustrated so disappointed so angry <laughs> at my boyfriend you know <laughs> of this whole situation i remember when i went out wanted to cry but i said no because i'm you know i'm waiting for the bus i can't start crying <laughs> Let me hold everything in and cry when I reach home. So the first thing I did when I went out of the embassy, I sent him a message. I was like, they asked me about this name. I don't know who is this person. Can you please tell me about it? He was like, what? They asked you about that? I said, yes. Who is she? He was like, it's the Tanzanian lady that I told you before. I had invited her, you know, to Italy. She stayed here for a month and then she went back to Tanzania things did not go well explained to me everything you know into details told me I am so sorry I wish I could have told you things into details so he was like don't worry tomorrow I'm going to call her and you know explain things to her so yes guys the next day my boyfriend had to call her they talked 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 explained everything very well and I'm so glad that the lady at the embassy understood and told him tell your girlfriend to reapply again for that tourist visa I am going to grant her the tourist visa so guys the Afro cinema ended like that and <laughs> I 
I prepared again for the documents and he sent me his documents. I went to the embassy, applied, and after the week, that was the time for me to go back and take my visa. Yes, guys, it was 26th of January 2017. <laughs> I was so, so happy. Oh my God, I couldn't wait, you know, to meet him again. So by the way, guys, I forgot something. Like I told you, I knew I was going to be granted the visa for that first time when I applied. I had bought, you know, gifts. My bags were, you know, packed ready, you know, to travel. <laughs> So when they denied me the visa, I came back, then started seeing my bags packed, everything. I cried and cried and cried. <laughs> yeah, but you know, that's life. That's how things can be, especially with a visa application. But sometimes you can apply even two times, then you get the third time. So guys, now I've got my visa. It's time to travel to Italy. I was very, very nervous, scared. So I prepared myself. I remember going with my friends, you know. <laughs> they accompanied me to the airport. I did the check-in and then I arrived to the desk of the immigration. So guys, I forgot one important document to take with me, which is the invitation letter. So at the immigration desk, they asked me, where is your invitation letter? I was like, the invitation letter? I left it at the embassy. <laughs> so the lady was like, oh my God, the invitation letter is needed. How can you travel without an invitation letter? So they had to call the Italian embassy in Dar es Salaam. It was at night. I don't know who picked, but I saw the lady talking to them, talking about the invitation letter. And after that, the lady was like, Tell the person that has invited you to send you his copy. If he remained with a copy, he should send you his copy. You remain with it on your phone because it's going to be a problem. We can allow you to go. But when you arrive at Amsterdam, because I was traveling with KLM, they are not going to allow you, you know, pass the border, you know, enter Europe. I got so scared and my boyfriend never had the copy of the invitation letter. Oh my God, guys, it was a disaster. And not only that, guys, I went, you know, in the second desk, still immigration people. Then this guy, I'll never forget this guy because he left me with a trauma. So this guy started asking me for show money. <laughs> Do you have any money with yourself? I was like, no, I don't have any money. <laughs> Guys, remember, it's not that I didn't have any money. I had left my money, you know. My money was in the bank and the money that I had, like in cash, I gave it to my friends that escorted me to the airport. Because for me, you know, I didn't see the need of having money. Guys, the guy Alini Chamba in Swahili, Nili Chambwa. <laughs> How can you travel like a luggage? You know, in Swahili, he was like, Unasafirije kama mzigo. <laughs> Guys, let's laugh and also learn from this. So I told him I didn't know I was supposed to have money. So he was like, it's for your own good. What if you arrive in Italy and this guy does not show up? What are you going to do? I was like, if he doesn't come, I'll have to talk to my friend. She will come to take me. <laughs> he was like, you don't understand. You don't have money with you. How will you get the money? You know, go on the public phone and call. Call your friend or call the person that invited you. Yes, you know the address to his house, but do you have money to take a train, you know, <laughs> to his place? You don't have any money with yourself. This is a very big mistake. So I was like, maybe I call my friend so that they can return and, you know, bring the money to me. He was like, you're late. There is no that time to wait for your friends. And here where you are, you can say that you are going back, you know. So, oh my God, I stayed there. I was thinking and thinking. I almost wanted to cry. I sent a message to him and told him everything. He was like, I never heard of show money. <laughs> This is my first time hearing show money. So in the end, the guy was like, okay, listen, you go, whatever will happen to you, I don't want to know. 
You are the people who embarrass us. You are going to arrive at Amsterdam when they ask you for show money. You don't have it. The next morning, we'll be at the arrivals, you know, to welcome you back. <laughs> ah, I'm laughing right now, but oh my goodness. I, I even got stomach ache due to the stress. So in the end, he was like, you go. I don't know what is going to happen. So guys, yes, I went, I boarded, but inside the flight, guys, it's my first time, you know, to be in that big, big plane. <laughs> Second, I have that stress of what will happen when I arrive to Amsterdam. Can you feel me, guys? <laughs> so it wasn't good at all. I was, you know, traumatized, very, very scared. I wasn't happy at all. I was not happy the whole trip till we arrived at Amsterdam and when I arrived at Amsterdam goodness it was super super cold the way I was dressed oh my god <laughs> it wasn't you know <laughs> good for that winter period I felt so cold very very cold then yeah so when it came to connect the flight to italy no those guys never asked me anything about show money which i thank god and i now returned you know to normal <laughs> started being happy being excited to meet my boyfriend so guys i remember i talked about this always be with your invitation later put it in your bag that you are going to board with and for sure money yes the guy was very very right yes i totally agree with him but he was not supposed you know to talk to me in such kind of a way knowing that i've told him it's my first time traveling i didn't have any experience so yes guys always have that show money you know change it into the money of the country you are going to visit if we remember what happened to samantha so imagine if samantha never Never had any money you know with herself depending on Ricardo you know <laughs> to come at the airport and he doesn't show up and Italy they speak only Italian you can't even talk to someone and be like help me <laughs> though most international airports you find that they speak you know different languages yeah but having money by yourself when traveling is very very important don't get me wrong i'm not telling you to have i don't know lots lots of money no money that will help you like you know make that call take a train if anything happens maybe the guy doesn't show up and you don't know anyone in that country so guys yes i arrived in italy <laughs> <laughs> Turin <laughs> that is his city or the city close to where he lives and he had the Burger King boxes you know of a queen and a king <laughs> I showed the photo of him in the first part I'll see if I can get that photo again if I still have it we're so happy to see each other again he was like I'm so sorry for what happened to you you know <laughs> the whole stress then we went to his car and he drove to his home place so inside the car <laughs> the stress for show money i don't know the <laughs> invitation letter had gone but my stress now was what is gonna happen very very nervous guys we went and when we arrived in the city where he lives he was like oh i live in the very small city let me hope you will like it so he kept on going and as he was driving in the car i saw mountains you know he was driving towards the mountains so i was like oh my god does this guy lives in the mountains <laughs> I started getting, you know, scared, you know, mixed feelings. And then we arrived in a very small town, a very small old town. I think I showed you that small town in the video of part two where we met. I'll put a small clip here of that, you know, small town. So we arrived there and then I saw this big wood door, a <laughs> very old. I think it has got a hundred years. Yeah, that big wood gate. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very old. And my husband tells me that they don't want to change. You know, things here are kept for history. <laughs> you can't touch it. You can't say that you want to change it. But me coming from Africa, seeing that big wood gate oh my god i started feeling like where does this guy live <laughs>
Then we entered into his apartment. He had told me he's not a rich guy <laughs> when he came over to Tanzania. So when I entered into his apartment, yes, guys, he was living in a very small apartment. Everything inside was good. The furnitures were good. It was painted very well. Looking at it from the outside, <laughs> You could be like, oh my god, maybe inside it's gonna be ugly. No, it was very, very comfortable. The bathroom was very, very big. I entered in the bathroom, <laughs> you know, to shower. That's when I found everything, you know, organized, prepared for me. He bought everything for me, guys, including the sanitary pads. Can you imagine? <laughs> The nail polish, everything was there, new, new, waiting for me to, you know, remove the seal. <laughs> I was so happy and very, very impressed, guys. So guys, yes, he was living in a very small apartment and me coming from Tanzania, you know, guys, <laughs> yes, in Dar es Salaam, it's not that I was living in a very big house, no, but when we talk of the family houses, of course, <laughs> you find you have got a very big house at home with lots of rooms. <laughs> so for me, it was kind of like, hmm, this is strange. How would someone live in a small apartment like this, you know? Yes, he's not rich, but he's a white guy. <laughs> you know the assumption, guys, and I know you too have got your own assumptions. <laughs> I've been trying to tell you to, you know, remove all those assumptions <laughs> of thinking, you know, white guys are rich, all are rich, <laughs> or overreacting at first look. Yeah, this is what I want to, you know, make you understand. So everything was good, but that feeling of, hmm, the apartment is really small. How are we gonna live if things go, you know, further? <laughs> And I'm so open, I'm honest, straightforward. I had to ask him, but what happens if you get married? Are you going to be, you know, uh, are we going to remain here? Or maybe you've got plans of changing. He was like, no, this shouldn't worry you at all. <laughs> I'm living in a small apartment because, you know, I'm living alone. I'm a bachelor. <laughs> there is no need of taking a very big house for what? But if we start living together, if you relocate here, we get married, of course, I will take a more bigger house, you know, enough for us. And yes, guys, he sticked to that because when I returned back to Tanzania, he started looking for a bigger house where we are right now. The thing is, I don't do vlogs, you know, <laughs> like show you my private life, but maybe in the future, I will show you, you know, where I live. And, but you're also planning to shift into a more bigger house because you've got some other, you know, projects. So I'm telling you all this so that you don't make a mistake of judging a guy without asking him questions, without understanding him better, what are his plans? Yes, because guys, the truth is, if I could have judged him and never asked him anything of his future plans, then be like, mm, this guy is living in a small apartment. For me, I don't want a guy who lives in a small apartment. I want to live in a very big house. <laughs> then you leave him, that means you lose. And something else that told me it's not that he has got money problem, it's because he paid for the whole trip never asked me to pay for anything but he had told me also his job and my friend told me also about the job that he does so I knew he was financially stable but missing him in a small apartment gave me lots of questions and that's why I asked so don't rush into a conclusion just because you saw the guy showed you his apartment it's a very small apartment and you start panicking be like no this guy is poor you start calculating how much he earns watch the actions and how he talks about money i told you a guy who complains about money all the time that's a problem even if he lives in a very big house but still complains about money he is financially unstable so yes guys i took a shower and after having a shower he cooked for me some italian sausages <laughs> they were very very yummy we talked and talked talked again about the whole situation of the visa what what <laughs> again the past relationship experience again into details <laughs> yeah we really talked a lot and then night came 
This is the big moment that you all were waiting for. <laughs> the goodies. <laughs> so night came, guys. And when night came, what he told me is, I know you're tired due to the whole, you know, traveling stress. So if you don't feel like, you know, getting intimate with me, <laughs> sharing the goodies, I'm going to wait until you are ready. Even if you decide that this time you're not going to, you know, give the goodies, I am going to still wait for you. I just want you to be ready. Don't worry. <laughs> and when I talked to my friend about this, she was like, what? I can't believe it. <laughs> I told her, yes. Then she told me he's a good guy. He is really a good guy. So the first night, guys, no, I never shared the goodies. I was very, very tired. Everything was new. A lot of things were going, you know, through my mind. But after staying for a week, then I was ready. After a week, I was ready and we enjoyed the goodies. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it went well, guys. It went well. So I talked about the introduction on my side that it's only my sister who knew everything. On his side, yes, I knew he had two kids and he even sent me the photos of the kids. He sent me the photos of all his relatives and even the nieces. But when I came here, I told you this is not the city where he was born, but he has got one sister who lives here. So he took me to his sister for the first time to visit my sister-in-law and oh my god she's so loving i really love my sister-in-laws they treat me so so good i am so happy when i'm with them i'm very free you know <laughs> yeah they really really adore me so yes we arrived at her sister's place and she was happy to see me and before we left her house she gave me lots of gifts including some perfumes <laughs> and some makeups guys <laughs> you know I like makeup and I too brought some gifts for them for my sister-in-laws <laughs> and for my husband too I told you, you can't just go empty-handed yeah so the meeting with the sister was really really good so the intro to his kids was never done guys he introduced me to his kids and the reason is the first relationship failed yes the kids had not met her but due to that experience he was like what if i introduce her and then she returns back you know to tanzania then starts stories starts being like no i don't want to come back or you know reject me just like that you know while i have introduced her to my kids so he just left it like that i met sister and yeah took me places visited lots of places around his city which is a city close to where he lives. We went to the museum, all was good, took me shopping. Oh my God, guys, I enjoyed very, very much. I was over the moon, you know, living life. <laughs> yeah, and being loved, which is what I was missing, you know, in the past. <laughs> so guys, the first time I came here, I remember we also went to the birthday party of his colleague so we really enjoyed at that birthday party danced i told you my husband sings he likes singing so he was singing and when i was sitting at the table he wasn't there because he was not there singing
and also we went to another party of his friends to introduce me to other friends <laughs> they will come to me very well even invited me to dance could ask him for the permission can we dance with her and then he said yes of course you can dance so i danced with them I enjoyed really very very much so guys the day to return back home to Tanzania came <laughs> and I told you guys how the last day went how he was worried that maybe when I go back to Tanzania I'm gonna forget about him but I assured him not to worry so did some shopping for me again bought some gifts for my friends because some of my friends knew about him and also bought some gifts for my sister you know <laughs> the one that he knew so now you want to know when did other relatives came to know about my italian boyfriend existence <laughs> it was the second time when i visited italy yes but to be honest guys i kept my relationship very very private i was protecting it so so much and later on one of my brothers told me i am so proud of you but i am very very happy of how it all turned out to be after getting to know my husband where we live our life and everything yeah so my advice on this if you're an adult don't let someone else decide for you you know what you want in your life other people might not understand they might not have gone through what you went through maybe in your past life relationship experience so always follow your heart go for what you want so guys yes i returned back home in tanzania we kept on communicating then i returned for the second time the third time that's when i stayed here completely sophie came then got married you know the rest is history but i'm telling you guys i am happily married we have been together for five years now oh my god i can't believe it just seems like yesterday so yes guys i really thank god for my husband he's so loving he's so understanding he's so caring he's so generous oh my god he's the most quiet man <laughs> i've ever seen <laughs> overall guys i really enjoy my marriage i'm so happy <laughs> just keep on praying for me and for my you know little family <laughs> thank you so much guys for watching this video till now i know it has been long <laughs> but these are the things that i've never shared with you i thought that it is good i share them with you they will help you guys that are out there searching for the one so if you have liked this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends family everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something watch my other videos too they are super good don't forget to comment below what you think about this video until next time guys i love you so much you're always here in my heart ciao ciao Mwah. <laughs>